Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> hey guys, uh, so tonight we're going to make a flight tray for whiskey glasses. So with the flight tray, we are just using a, a Glen Karen mm -hmm. for measurements. Yep. Uh, we're going to have four glasses for the tray. Um, you know, this is in case you want to do blinds or you just for fun. four different things out and you want to organize them. <laughs> it's for fun. Yes. yes. And I wanted to do this. We're going to use uh, the three millimeter. The, the three millimeter. Yeah. We're going to use that three millimeter plywood uh, in combination with the uh, both cuts that we did last week. Uh, I'm going to do finger joints. Yeah, the finger joints and then I'm going to do the flex sides on it. I thought that'd be neat. So uh, what we need to do first is measure the glass uh, and then we can jump into the designing process. So got my calipers right here. And really what I want to do is make sure that uh, the hole's big enough for the bottom to fit in. And the biggest point of that is right about 47. So I'm gonna jump up to 48 millimeters and we'll see how that goes when we're cutting it. And then right about here, we're looking at around 30 millimeters. So as long as we go above that deep, uh, they'll be able to sit down in. And um, so we're gonna use the same program we used last week with the box.py. Oh. Um, and we'll see if they've got something that uh, will work for what we want to do. So let's jump into that and then we can get into lab burn. All right, so here we are back on boxes.py. We're looking for boxes with flex, no hinges. Right. All right, so this is the one we picked and we are going to plug in those measurements that we grabbed uh, out there on the Glen Cairn. Mm. Um, the X, the width, basically what I'm taking is four Glen Cairns adding 10 millimeters between each one, 10 millimeters on each side at the end, so 242. Uh, the y-axis is the 48 inches plus 10 millimeters top and bottom, which is why it's 68. And then the height we saw was 30, so we went with 35. Hmm. And all of these are the outside measurements. Uh, you can pick inside or outside. I want outside because I want to know what the final dimensions are coming uh, the radius is just going to be half of the Y so that it wraps around and is 10 millimeters around the um, end, the circle that we cut out for the oh. um, Glen Cairn. Yep. And then same thing, uh, wall pieces, we've got two, that way uh, it's big enough, otherwise it would be too big for our laser. Um, same thing, we got to make sure and do DXF. Uh, turn off labels, turn off the reference, and burn one point, point one two. So that was real quick through that, but um, it, it's basically everything we figured out earlier, so we can plug it in. We don't have to redo it every time. It's nice yeah. uh, to be able to do that. Yeah. So then we just import it into Lightburn mm -hmm. and move it around to fit where we want it on our board. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Got to make sure that it fits within or laser. <laughs> um, I did end up doing all of this to then remember that the uh, board that I'm using is not the same size as the laser bed so I had to you know move it around again but you, know, you learn things as you go so make mistakes it's a uh, part of fixing it. I'm gonna turn these 90 degrees and then get them over there so we're wasting less wood this way we've got more left over so that we can use on other things uh, when we go to try more. All right, so right now the top and the bottom are solid and I actually want to have the four holes for the Glen Cairns. Mm -hmm. And those we decided are 48 by 48. So we'll plug that in there. And I need four of these. I want them all to be perfect, straight. Yeah. So there's gonna be a lot of nudging coming up like we <laughs> learned uh, before. But also I'm going to use this little offset tool and I'm going to set it right here at seven millimeters. That is going to be the distance that we want from the circle to those edges. Now the, hmm. the extra three millimeters to go to 10 millimeters is going to be because the flex part is actually gonna be on the outside of that radius. So I use this offset so that I can get it nudged right in place perfect.
Okay, so we're gonna do our other offsets at 10 millimeters because that's how far apart we want the, the holes to be. And then we're gonna duplicate the inside circle and nudge it over where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. yep. Nudge it over, get it lined up with the 10 millimeter offset and do that again. Two more times. Two more times, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we got it all where we want it. Yep, now we're gonna go back and actually delete all of those offsets. So all we leave is the inside circle perfectly 10 millimeters away from every edge. All right, so I originally set this up to do two separate layers, one of the circles, one of the straight lines for the flex. I did, after this, go back and make a third one, thinking that the straight lines could go faster. Um, You'll find out here in a little bit why that was wrong. And then uh, the outsides were all on its own as well. So that's because as it's actually cutting again, the circles can fall out. The flex, if the outside fell out, and then the flex would be off yeah. in the wrong spots. So you want to layer it in the order that you need to cut first, just in case anything does fall out. And as I was doing this um, and had the different issues come up and because we did this a few times um, I was having the circles actually completely fall out so make sure and get those in order everything is going to be either at 600 millimeters a minute 90% with eight passes or 500 milli millimeters a minute 90% and eight passes so I should have left everything at the exact same speed <laughs> 500 on everything 90% eight passes uh, would have been the best bet, but no, I had to mess around with it. But we learned, yeah. and uh, we'll go back and do it different next time. <laughs> but all right, let's go put it on the laser and see how it does. All right. And it is rolling, so. Yeah, I know. All right, so the laser cut through these pretty nice. Uh, yep. Literally just fell out. Yeah, the, we did have to do a couple of passes. I was having an issue with the laser. Um, turns out uh, it was stopping and jittering and doing weird things. 
Turns out it was just a loose wire on the stepper motors, so make sure to always check those wires, make sure they're nice and tight. Uh, if you do have any errors at all, just check your settings. All right, so we're gonna pop all these out and then we'll see about putting it together. All right, we've got these pieces all popped out here, the two flexed ends. Uh, they will go together here and then wrap around uh, the top and the bottom. So let's see how that fits. Here's the top and or the top and the bottom. All right, so here it is all together. And take a look here. I didn't get through this completely because I did actually drop down uh, the amount of passes for the flex, not thinking I needed quite as much. I was wrong. So it didn't go all the way through and it's not flexing right, which caused it to break when I was putting it together. Same thing on this side, except worse. And uh, it was a little tight on the joints so that might be uh, we dropped down we're at 0.12 from last time so maybe we drop it to uh, 0.11 uh, get a little bit better of a joint on that the Glencairn does fit it sits pretty nicely mm -hmm. um, however there's no way to get two in there so the 10 millimeters that I put in between each one uh, definitely not enough probably need it doubled um, at least, yeah, it looks like it would clear double. Um, so, but you know, prototype. Yeah, that's, so. that's why we do this, so we can learn. Absolutely. So we'll make a few, make a few adjustments, get that out wider. Uh, but I really love the overall look of it, mm -hmm. you know, just, uh, tweaking the sides a little bit, um, size a little bit. Thanks for coming and watching. We'll see you next time.